Okay, y'all. So season seven, episode one. Everybody looking good. But here's Danny acting like the same old self-sabotage ass girl. I'm tired, Danny. We need something new, honey. Grow the fuck up, honey. Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Brittany Summer, and I'm back with another recap of Sisters Season 7, Episode 1. Woo! Yeah, it's it's getting there, right? Y'all, y'all see it, y'all saw it. Right now, I don't know what I'm more shocked about because from Andy inviting Gary over for dinner, what the hell? And then Danny's still acting like the same person in season one, two, three, four, five, and six is blowing me. And then the fact that Gary took his ass in Andy bathroom and started masturbating to her fucking dirty ass panties took me to the roof, bro. I was like, what? Bro, this is not your place. Anybody could walk in the bathroom, bro. Anybody could walk in this bathroom. This is not your house. What are you doing? Uh, let me let me just start from the beginning. Okay, y'all. So season seven starts off with Danny. And you know, it was basically her getting kidnapped, right? At, she's at the airport. She's going to her car. She sees glass on the floor. And she's looking around. She's like, what the fuck? This guy comes around and like cover her mouth and drag her down. But it was a dream. When she wakes up from this dream, guess who's next to her? Tony. So, um, season seven, I believe, is taking place three months later. So it may look like Danny first date with Tony. She took him back to her house and they, you know, got comfortable, whatever. But no, this is three months later. So, anywho's when Danny wakes up, Tony's right there, and he's, like, trying to console her. Because she woke up, like, scared and, like, yelling and trying to fight the air. And he's, like, trying to console her. Like, hey, babe, like, you okay? You have another nightmare? Like, this is not good. And once again, here go Danny deflecting and acting like whatever's happened is not a big of a deal. And she's okay, She'd be all right. And it's like, to this point, Danny, we need you to be real with yourself. Like, come on, girl. Now, Danny's telling him, telling Tony about the dream, like how she felt the guy, like, breathe on her neck. She could smell him and, like, all of that stuff, right? So he's telling her, like, hey, maybe these dreams that you're having is, like, a deeper meaning. Like, maybe your dreams are trying to tell you something. You know what Danny said? Danny said, you watch too many terror card readings. Girl, like, if Deflect was a person, Danny, like, we need you to stop. This is tiring. So Tony's saying to her, like, listen, like, maybe you should talk to somebody about this. Maybe um, therapy won't be so bad. You could get it off your chest of what you're thinking about, what's on your mind. And once again, Danny acts like he is a whole criminal because he is going to therapy. Okay, now it goes to Andy, and Andy's at her house. She's in a nice, beautiful dress. It's so cute. I like the little, um, what you call it, feathers on the top. Off the shoulder, really cute. I love her hair. You know, she's cooking up a storm, like doing her thing. And there goes her man, Jordan. Okay, y'all, what y'all think about Jordan? What y'all think about the new Jordan? Because... I was definitely used to and really liked the old Jordan. Like, I felt like they, they was perfect together. I don't know. Like, uh, I'm mad they had to change him. But, like, here he is. Like, he's taller, um, more light-skinned, you know. Um, I don't know. Like, I was feeling the other Jordan. What y'all think about this Jordan, the new Jordan? At the end of the day, he's still bringing the same vibe. Like, he's into Andy. He's loving on her, kissing on her, calling her beautiful. You know, the same vibe that the old Jordan was given. So, as Andy and Jordan is talking about, like, how they want the night to go and they want to keep it positive and, you know, hopefully it's a good night, Andy's elevator door opens and out comes Gary and Penelope. 
The only thing that came to my mind was Penelope stayed with him. <laughs> out of all the stuff she found out, she stayed with this man. Like, you stay with this man? And Gary says, sorry, we're just a little bit late. Traffic was a bitch. So off rip, his vibe seems so off. Like, he seems like he already had the attitude. Like, they was probably arguing in the elevator. Like, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. Then the next scene, it goes to Pam. And I'm kind of happy because it'll lighten up the mood a little bit. Like, I want to smile. I want to laugh. Like, and Pam always gives a good laugh. Like, a good nice shade. Like, just funny ass girl. I love her. So Pam is live and she's showing like her followers like the new the new location and saying that we're going to be open soon so y'all get ready because we're going to have all your edges laid and I feel like good for her like if you want if you get ready to do something you got to like you know let these people know so they could tune the fuck in and Pam is doing that because you don't see Karen doing it. Somebody got to get the word out that you have a new location and y'all opening up soon. So good for you, Pam. Keep doing your thing, honey. Y'all, I have a question. What do y'all think about or how do y'all feel about Karen's new name for the salon? And it's Karen's Fresh Start Salon. What y'all think about that? Because I don't know about it. Like, I feel like it could have been better names out there. But okay, like if that's what you want to call it. So Karen walks up and tells Pam to get off the phone and stop playing around, right? And help her finish up setting up the salon. So Pam is like, okay, girl, but you need some men in here to help us because you can't live no box, no boxes anyways. So Pam is like, whatever happened to that contractor guy? Like, he just ghosts you. And yup, she is talking about Brian. I can't believe he ghosts her. Karen started to explain to Pam that her contractor said that Brian and his wife started having issues and he decided to fall back and focus on his marriage. Karen also said that he basically left her with the salon high and dry. Pam <laughs> replied, oh, literally, maybe you're the reason why he had to like fall back. Maybe his wife could tell that he was feeling somebody new. Karen's response was, listen, the only thing he was helping me with was the salon. We didn't have nothing. We didn't do nothing. And I'm not interested in no man right now. I'm just trying to focus on me and my baby and getting the salon back up and running. So Pam was like, okay. I feel like eventually Karen is going to let Pam in like more as a friend, like a girlfriend instead of just like her partner or her associate. So... Yeah, eventually, I feel like, yeah, Pam is going to be one of her best friends. So the next scene, it goes to my favorite couple, Zach and Fatima. So that they are at their house, and Zach is on the phone with somebody, and he's pacing, going back and forth, back and forth. And he's like, oh, can you let Michael know that his dad loves him? And Fatima goes, and Fatima loves him too. And, you know, Zach tells the person on the phone, Fatima loves him too, and he finally hangs up. So the lady on the phone that... Zach was talking to, name is Miss Bao, and I'm guessing it's the social worker. Fatima asked Zach what does Miss Bao say, and Zach said that Michael is adapting well to his new foster family. Then Fatima was like, okay, that's good, that, that sounds great. And Zach goes, hell it is, like, he needs to be here with us. But she is right, the baby do need to be with them in their household, but as of right now, this is how it has to be dealt with like at the end of the day his mom is not fit to raise him at all so the best place right now is in foster care and then i guess eventually fatima and zach can go and get him or adopt him or however it works but clearly zach is impatient like he don't want to wait he wants his son now and it sucks that he has to go through that but he needs to have some patience. But like always, you know Fatima will always keep it real with him and says straight up like, listen, I want him here too. Like, trust me. But as of right now, the right place for him is where he's at. And when it's the right time, we will have him. Once again, Fatima did her job and settled her man down. So finally, Zach relaxed. It was like, you're right. Okay, I need to relax. So yeah, perfect couple. Love them. After all of that, 
then it goes to Sabrina. So Sabrina is finally at her old job. She's at her old bank, the old location, and she's setting up in her new office. And it's cute because she has this picture of of the girls. So it's Danny, Andy, and Karen in the picture. They look like they're young, so probably like college. But it's a cute picture. It's nice that they, she have them, like a picture of them in her office. As Sabrina sits down, she gets a phone call, and guess who it is? Maurice. So Sabrina and Maurice start talking about like how Sabrina's getting settled into the new job, and Maurice is telling her, "Don't rub it in, you know, because he still don't got no job yet." But thank God for TGFF. So I was like, "What the hell is TGFF?" Maurice then says, "Thank God for fixation." So clearly, he's still doing OnlyFans. Sabrina asks him if he's still doing that. He said, yes, of course. Duh, he will always be doing that until he finds a new job. And then Sabrina says, okay, so what are you guys doing tonight? Are you and Calvin here in the streets? Maurice says, oh, no, I guess I forgot to tell you, but Calvin moved away with a white bitch. His words, not mine. Then now it takes us back to Danny. She's still in her bed with Tony talking about therapy. And here she goes again, deflecting, deflecting, deflecting. Like, girl, can you take accountability for one day, honey? Tony is telling Danny, like, hey, this is more than just bad dreams. You've been having these things, bad dreams, waking up, kicking and screaming for almost three months. This is not good. You need to go talk to somebody. Why Danny gonna say, you sound like a broken record. It's just bad dreams. Girl... Tony then says, I hope I sound like a man that cares about you. And going to therapy doesn't make you crazy. The fact that he has to explain to her what it, like, why do I have to explain to you that going to therapy doesn't make you crazy? Like, how old are you, 10? That's when Tony tells Danny, like, hey, I go to therapy. Am I crazy? But, of course, Danny would think he's fucking crazy because he goes to therapy. Now, if awkward was a scene... It'd be this one right here with um, Andy, Jordan, his sister Penelope, and Gary ass. This makes no sense to me. Like, I don't understand why this has to be done. Andy is being so nice, like so sweet, so polite, like trying to make everything seem like it's not awkward or like, you know, she's doing everything in a good manner, right? In a pleasant manner. Gary is just the opposite. First off, <laughs> this is, oh my God. Andy asks them if they want any appetizers, right? Gary looks around and he's like, oh, you made this? And she's like, yes, with a big smile. He's like, mm, no, nah, I'm good. Like, I wait. I wait till we all eat. And then she asks Penelope and she's like, oh, you know, I, I wait till we all eat. And, you know, I want to make room for the big meal. It smells so good. So, Andy is like, says her all the stuff she cooked. And if you look at Gary's face, like, he's doing the most stinkest face ever. Like, disgusted. It gets worse. It gets worse. So then Jordan is telling, um, no, Jordan asks Penelope to, like, have some sparkling water or whatever. She's like, thanks, brother. And he goes to Gary. He's like, yo, me and Andy a few weeks back. Went to this wine place and got this wine. It's dope. You should try it. And Gary gonna say, I don't need to do nothing but stay black and die, my brother. Like, why, Gary? Why do you have to be this way? And then Gary says, hell, as rich as I am, I might not even have to do the latter. And then everybody looks at him like, what? Like, what's, what's wrong with you, bro? And he's like, oh, yo, your brother knows I'm playing. Like, I'm just joking. Jordan, I'm just joking, right? You know I'm playing. And Jordan trying to keep the peace is like, yeah, right, yeah. I would have been like, don't play with me like that. You ain't funny. After all of that, since Gary said he don't want no wine, Andy gave him some sparkling water, right? He gonna be like, oh, Andy, like, when did you become such a good host? Like, when you was with me, you wasn't doing nothing like this. Andy goes, what can I say? Jordan brings out the best of me, more ways than one. And I'm like, okay, girl, throw your shade, girl, and represent your man, honey. So as Andy and Jordan is like, you know, flirting and doing their cute stuff, Penelope goes like, oh, you guys look so cute. And Jordan and Andy says at the same time, we are. So they start giggling again, like cute, 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 cute shit. So Andy turns around and say, like, how are you guys? Like, how are you guys doing? And 
out of nowhere, Gary was like, oh, we're doing great. We are so in love. But you could see on Penelope's face that that's not the case. Like, she looks so shocked that he even said they're happy. So when he kissed her, she didn't even kiss him back. Like, he just basically, her lips did a perk up or nothing. It was just like a flat face kiss, basically. So I'm guessing, I feel like Penelope didn't want to embarrass Gary. So she was like, yeah, yeah, we, we are great. We are very happy. You could tell those are lies, lies, and more lies. So then Andy goes, okay, and, you know, I can see from your glow that your pregnancy is going well. And her and Penelope is, like, going back and forth about, like, enjoying pregnancy and stuff like that. And he says, like, she's happy for both of them. Then out of nowhere, Gary goes and say, I think it's enough mindless chit-chat from one evening. Like, basically cutting their conversation short. And everybody looked at him like, okay, bro, like, your attitude sucks. Gary, Gary just trying to get down to the get down. Like, why are we here? What's going on? What's what's happening here? He want to get down to the get down. Like, gives him straight. Why did they invite him over here? Then the next scene, it goes back to Sabrina. She's still at her office talking to Maurice. So Sabrina is shocked as hell that Calvin left without saying goodbye. And, you know, Maurice had to break it down to him. Like, listen, girl, like, Calvin didn't have to tell you nothing. Like, at the end of the day, he had all right to leave with whoever he wanted to leave with. Sorry he didn't say goodbye, but hey, it's not like y'all had anything going on anyways. That being said, I don't feel like Calvin is coming back. He is probably one of the characters that's not going to be in season seven or any of the seasons. So good luck to Calvin. I wish him all the best. I know him and his white girl is going to be happy as hell. Now we're back at Karen's salon with Pam. Karen walks in carrying a box and Pam is like, girl, put that down. When Karen gave the box to Pam, while Pam just threw the box on the floor, that girl is hilarious. So after that, you know, Karen sits down and Pam is like, how about you call one of your mans to come help you like do the heavy lifting? And Karen says like, oh, what man? Like what man do I have? So Pam is like, you know, um, Aaron won't mind helping you out. Just call him. Karen's like, no, 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 no. And I feel like, I honestly feel like the reason why Karen don't want to be with Aaron is because Zach don't like Aaron. And I feel like she thinks if she brings Aaron back in her life, she's never going to have Zach again. So yeah, that that's my opinion on that, honey. Because she dead ass could at least be his friend and let him help you out. So then Pam was like, what about Zach? He's your baby daddy. Why he can't help? So why the freak? Karen, you see, this is why all her nice shit, the way she was acting, was such a fucking fake. Because why she going to say, oh, you you want me to invite Zach over here to lend a helping hand so Fatima jealous ass could break everything else in his body? Like, girl, what? Jealousy where? Jealousy where? Who is jelly? Who is jelly? Fatima is not jelly, girl. You just mad disrespectful that she had to put her foot down mad time in your damn face. Like, girl, What? What? Jealous where? Get out of here. That's how you know all that nice shit she was doing? Fraud. Fake as hell. Okay, so it goes back to Danny and Tony. And they're still on the topic of therapy. So as Tony's trying to explain to her what therapy is, what it helps with, like, Danny is still deflecting. And I'm glad Tony could see it and call her out on her bullshit because it's annoying. It's really, really frustrating as a grown man, you know what I mean? Like, to try to talk to somebody and they act like they don't know what the fuck. Like, literally, like, you're not even trying to understand. You're not even trying to, like, open your mind to different things. You're just so close-minded. It's annoying. And once again, she's self-sabotaging on her own. I feel like this is clearly not going to work again. So at that point, I feel like Tony was like, you know what? Maybe somebody else could talk to her about that because she's not listening to me so i feel like after they finished talking about therapy he asked danny to promise him that she would think about therapy and she said yeah kind of soda i promise whatever i would think about it um after that he called sabrina to talk to her speaking of sabrina sabrina got a man y'all sabrina is now officially dating rich and i'm not gonna lie they look cute together he looks like he brings out a wild side in Sabrina, and I'm liking it for her. And it seems like Sabrina's opened up to him and, and telling him all 
her business about what happened at the bank and why she got fired and her probably being in jail and all of that. And it looks like he supports her and he's really mad that they did that to her. You know, good man shit. When Sabrina says she's getting addicted to Rich, I was like, okay, girl. Okay, honey, get your man, honey. We'll see if they see, stay together, though. Let's see, because it should be happening in the sister's child. So when Rich was like, oh, I want you to show me how addicted you are, and Sabrina says, oh, how about you show me? And they start kissing, and I'm like, girl, please don't have sex on your desk, because what if your manager walked in? If you didn't get fired then, you definitely get fired now. Don't get caught now. Then it goes back to Karen throwing shade at Fatima again. Now, Pam was telling Karen, like, hey, why you can't call Zach so he can help pick up, like, a box or two, whatever. Karen's like, oh, no, I don't want Zach or Fatima in my salon. Unless he's here to pay for a better fade, shake, or she want to get her edges laid properly for a change. She Karen continues to say, Zach may be the father of my child, but he is Fatima's mess now, and I'm good off that. Well, honey, who you trying to convince? Us or you? Because you know damn well the way you acting don't seem like somebody's over it. And the fact that she never had the same ass energy when she see them nowadays. Like, now it's all cool and collective. Like, oh, if I have extra clothes, you want them. If you need this, give me a call. Bitch, don't call my phone. Okay, so now we back to the awkwardness. We're back at Andy's house with Gary and Penelope and Jordan. Since Gary asked, why did y'all invite us over here? Andy was explaining to him and Penelope that Jordan misses his sister. So that's why we invited you guys over. Jordan and Penelope says they miss each other. And Gary goes, so I'm just here to believe that this is all just a big family reunion. So as Gary's throwing shade, Andy was like, you know what, Gary, you're right. I did have an agenda. I wanted to lessen any remaining tension between us. So Gary being Gary basically said, why would it be any tension, Andy? Is it because you try to come between me and the mother of my child? Gary is such a narcissist. It's fucking ridiculous. And you know, Andy is holding her down because she's basically calm, collected, and she's not letting Gary words get to her. So Andy says, I wanted to inform Penelope, who she was dealing with. Once homegirl had all the facts, she was free to make her own choice. And she made her decision. And I'm cool with it. Like, I'm straight. That's when that's when Andy's phone rings and it's Fatima and Zach. Andy then gets up and goes in the bathroom to talk to Zach and Fatima. Zach was basically asking Andy, is there anything more he could do to speed up the process to get Michael? Andy said, no, there's nothing else. Just keep calm. Trust me, everything's going to be okay. So Annie then goes back to the couch and she says to Gary and Penelope, let's just clear the air. Why Gary, mind you, Penelope is in Gary's arms. Gary moved Penelope from his arms mad fast to be like, oh yeah, let's clear the air. Like he basically like, yanked her from his arms. It's like, girl, oh my God. Gary is just showing how much he don't care about Penelope. And Penelope is still there. Why? Like, you have to be out your mind. So as everybody's asking Penelope, is she okay? Gary don't give a fuck. Like, Gary's, like, looking at Andy, like, ready to, like, have that discussion. So Andy goes, okay, well, it's no secret that we ended on, like, you know, bad terms. Right? But I would like to say now that it's water underneath the bridge. I don't, I don't care anymore. I'm trying to move on. Then Gary says, so you want me to believe that you're not harboring any bad feelings towards me? And I love this part for Andy because she says straight up, no, I have met my partner. I have met my equal, my love, someone that treats me with respect and don't use and abuse me. So as Gary's trying to like interject, she's like, listen, it's not about you, Gary. Is this a statement? It's a fact. Like, it is what it is. I'm good. I don't have no space for hate. And I was like, go ahead, girl. Clap that up. Go ahead, girl. You tell him. Maybe it would click in his damn crazy ass head. Jordan then says, yeah, Andy's right. And if things continue to go well, you may be looking at Atlanta's next first lady. 
So out of nowhere, Penelope is like, okay, hold on, brother. Don't you think you're jumping the gun? You just announced your um council bid, whatever. And Gary interrupted Penelope and was like, you know what? This sounds like a good idea. Like, um, let me contribute to your campaign and sends Jordan a hundred thousand dollars. And if we all know Gary, he doesn't do shit without no type of plan to get ahead. Like Clearly, there's a reason why he sent you that money. He probably won something eventually or, like, gave you some fake-ass money. He did something shady. Like, I don't think that money was genuine. I don't think he gave him that money in a genuine way or manner. Like, it's mad sus. Gary giving him $100,000 is mad sus. And Andy called it. Andy was like, babe, I don't think you should take it. But Penelope was like, no, Andy, why not? Like, if you want everything to be all cordial and cool, like, why he can't accept the money from Gary? La, 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 la. Because Gary is trifling, and that's why. But, you know, Andy was like, you know what? Okay. Um, Jordan was like, okay. And then Gary was like, you know what, babe? I got to go drain the drag. So Andy was going to show him where it was at, and he was like, oh, no, no, I know where it's at. You remember, I bought the place. Like, mad shady. Like, go to the bathroom, bro. Just go to the bathroom. And because of that statement right there, I feel like Andy's going to move. She's going to move. She's going to find her new place. It's going to be better than this. And she might just move in with Jordan. But I feel like she's definitely going to move because she could afford it. Then it goes to Sabrina. So Sabrina's still at her office basically having a make-out session with her man on her desk. So finally she tells her, her man, uh, Rich, to stop. And he's like, you know what? We could basically have sex in the car. I parked that back. So... Sabrina was like, yeah, why not? I guess. That's where she gets the call from Tony telling her to come over because Danny is having nightmares and waking up at night and it's been going on for three months. Okay, so back to Danny's house and Tony is getting out the bathroom and he's like basically saying he got to go. He got to go. And Danny's like, oh, where you going? Like, you can stay here. He's like, no, nah, I got to do something. I got to do something. And he leaves. And as soon as he's leaving, Sabrina comes in. And that's when Sabrina's like, okay, like, we need to talk about therapy. Okay, so now we're at the last scene on this first episode of season seven, right? So there they are, Andy, Jordan, and Penelope on the couch having a great time talking about um, Jordan and Penelope passed when they was children and, you know, just reminiscing, right? So then Penelope is like, oh, I wonder what, um, Gary's doing in the bathroom for so long. Let me go check on him. So in the bathroom, Gary is basically looking through Andy's belongings, right? And he opens up the drawers and he finds a drawer that's full of her panties. And it looks like one of those dirty panty drawers, like where you put your dirty panties and stuff. So you can watch them, watch them later. So why he takes one of the panties and sniffs it. Like, Gary, what are you on, bro? What are you on? So at the same time, Penelope goes in the bathroom to check on him. And at this point, Gary is jerking off while he's holding Andy's panties and smelling it, bro. What in the entire fuckery bro so when Penelope walks in she goes straight up like what the hell are you doing and Gary's like oh it's not what it looks like it's not what it looks like she was like it looks like you're jerking off to your ex panties dirty panties at that girl dirty panties Gary uh, you stooped really low like you went to the floor with it if y'all was Penelope and y'all walked in on your man doing that what would y'all have done because my thing is, is Penelope going to stay with him after this? Like, is she really going to be with him and go home with him after this? Okay, y'all, because this episode was crazy. Like, everybody's showing their true colors because Karen is still mad. Um, Danny is still the same old girl from first season. I'm happy for Andy. Like, Andy looks like she is trying to live her best life, and she really found somebody that she could really fuck with. I'm happy for her. And Sabrina, too. Go ahead, girl, making this man, like, take you out your comfort zone and doing your own thing. I love it. Okay, y'all. Thank you guys for listening to my recap of Sisters, Season 7, Episode 1. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think about this episode and what y'all think is going to happen next. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the love and support. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.